Wailing screams of terror rise like a symphony. The brainwashed community of Talonstadt now finds itself being slaughtered without mercy by the guards of Vicar Amelia. For every citizen slain, a ghoul rises in their place. Over the course of time it has taken for you to run from the castle back to Dark Shadows, a small army of ghouls has risen. The guards, lassoing with twisted revelry in their butchery, are pulled down by the tide of ghouls. As elongated nails and sharpened teeth rent flesh and armor, the guards' laughter never ceases. As you arrive at the burning tavern, the heat of the flames lick at your skin, and the crackling of the inferno fills your ears. Dark shadows is fully engulfed, with no hope of salvaging anything from within. The surging flame seems to dance and devour the wood structure casting a flickering orange light on the surrounding area. Thick smoke billows out into the air, choking the sky with its blackness. Against the magical black veil that shrouds the town, the smoke appears even more sinister. You move to regroup at a nearby fountain that doubles as a humble shrine to the platinum dragon, Bahamut. The fountain itself offers you no protection, but has enough clear space around it for you all to stand together. Maxwell stands directly in the fountain, Blessedly unscathed as you all join him. Already, hordes of ghouls along with undead skeleton soldiers and even zombie ogres converge on your position. A tidal wave of impending death and overwhelming numbers shamble their way towards you. The sea of grayed flesh and bleached bone appears endless. Don't want to look at Max Moore and be like, what's plan B? <sighs> Good, you're all well. Plan B is we beseech Pelo to deliver us from this nightmare. Looking at all of you, Maxwell says, Assure that there is nothing to fear. We who walk in the light shall be delivered from bloody heathens. Anderson, my son, please come and kneel before me. There are rites and ceremonies to perform. Time is of the essence. I go and kneel before him. As you approach sort of taking a ceremonial kneel that you were taught in the Order home. Maxwell stands over you, about ankle deep in this fountain water. Meanwhile, the rest of you are now having to draw weapons, beginning to cast spells as you blow back some of these approaching ghouls. I would say those of you with super high perceptions, Finian and William Yu especially, probably eight to 900, essentially just undead or just swarming around you all at once. Maxwell standing over you, Anderson begins a very very prim and proper rite, even amidst all the chaos unfolding around you all. As much as it pains me to say this, the light of Pelor has been denied this land and these people for too long. A sick and twisted heathen has corrupted these poor citizens, and now that she feels threatened, she has twisted them into abominations that we can no longer save. We must show them, my son. We will show all of those who can still be saved, and the filthy heathens who have preyed on the weak in the face of darkness. When the light is taken from us, we must rise as beacons, becoming the light itself. Let your soul shine bright, for it is in our unwavering resolve that we shall illuminate the path of salvation and vanquish the shadows that seek to consume us. You, my son, shall be the radiance that pierces through the darkest night and guides us towards victory. The marching tide of the undead continues to close in on you all. Maxwell shows no kind of sign of concern. You see one of the whites, one of the skeletal archers, fires and a stray arrow smacks straight into his shoulder, trail of blood beginning to seep down his white shirt, but he doesn't even flinch from his ritual. His eyes are focused on you, and as you look up at him, Anderson, you see the spirit of devotion burning brightly within him. Tide of evil has been gaining strength, and as always, these so-called leaders have dragged their feet until it is too late to easily stamp it out. Taim and his blasphemers have made a mockery of our order. Our temples were robbed. Our brothers and sisters were slain. And the honor of Pelor desecrated by this filthy pretender. Will you allow this to stand, my son? No, I will not. Maxwell smiles and removes the first of the two locked chests from his bags. A long, thin, rectangular box made from ivory dyed leather. 
pure gold bands support the case and three golden locks attached by chains keep the case sealed. Baylor has named you his vengeance. And through your tireless dedication, you have risen to honor that title. This, Maxwell utters a very brief prayer as the seals break, shattering and vanishing into a burst of glittering light. And reverently, he begins to undo the golden clasps. This weapon is a sacred relic from when the Pantheon was at its strongest. After the Calamity, only a handful remained. The entirety of the Paylor Order has two in its possession. Brother Commander Alexander Anderson, by my authority, and by the blessing of the Temple at Vasselheim, where this sacred blade has been kept, awaiting a servant of the Order worthy enough to wield it, name you Judicator. All Orders, all Pantheons will acknowledge you as a divine servant of Pelor, who only answers to the Dawnfather himself. None shall ever bar your path or ask you to stay your hand as you seek out heathens and betrayers. All will know your authority and your worthiness when they see that you will this. Maxwell lets the case fall away as he delicately clutches the most perfectly forged weapon you have ever laid eyes on. The weapon is a longsword made from pure white mithril, a cross guard in the shape of angel wings connects to a masterfully engraved handle. In the center of those wings is a brilliant yellow gemstone that gleams like sunlight. Divine radiance emits from the blade, and now that it's drawn, the undead actually stagger back in fear of the blade. The Holy Avenger, a fitting blade for you. Take it and use it well. Maxwell kneels down to reach eye level with you as he offers you the blade in both hands. I'm going to reach up and take it. Maxwell smiles and says, Though pride is something we all learn to suppress in the Order, I cannot help but feel overwhelmed by the pride I have at seeing you grow into the paladin you are today. Pelor himself has seen that growth as well, for is he commanded that we bestow another relic upon you? Maxwell takes out the second chest, a square and much smaller box compared to the sword case. The material looks ivory, but as you look at it, it's actually heavily secured adamantite. And unlike the sword case, this one contains nearly ten golden chains and locks, keeping it closed. As he takes it out of the bag, Maxwell lowers his head and begins to utter a long and reverent prayer. And at the end, you realize that Maxwell is no longer looking at the box or you. His eyes are sh forcefully shut as the chains splash into the fountain. Still kneeling and averting his gaze, he opens the box's lid, so that only you can see within and the contents that reside within it. Anderson, as you gaze inside the box, you see a tiny burning sun flame. And at first you think this tiny flame is useless, given this current situation, but as you stare into it, you quickly realize this is no ordinary sun flame. The voice of the Dawn Father suddenly graces you as he speaks, a booming voice of power and authority echoes in the air above the town. A gift left behind upon the day I departed this realm to traverse the divine gate, an ember of thine own form to be used by the one worthy enough to take it into thyself. The one who would take it must not think of glory, they must only think of the need. You once drew upon a power your physical form was not prepared for, a selfless act done to protect your companions. You did not think of glory, only the need to save. Anderson, my child, though it pains me that I have set you down a bloody path of vengeance, it is only because we must stamp out these vile heathens, and to do so, we must be willing to do whatever is necessary to protect all of Exandria from Taim. He and his followers are beyond the hope of redemption, so they will be destroyed. You made a vow of vengeance to me. Not once have you strayed from your vow. Not once have you swayed from your devotion. For this, I offer you a part of myself. A fragment of my own divine flame. I am thou. Thou art I. I proclaim your vow to be elevated to a blood oath. You will reclaim this town from the heathens. You will save the people trapped by this monster. You will rise and become the light itself, and show the world that we will not allow Taim to build this new world. Kill them, Anderson. Kill all of these bloody heathens, and claim my vengeance. Your will shall be done, How for do I you... shall not falter in this task. And with 
that, Anderson, with your announcement? How do you take the sun flame into yourself? I'm going to very carefully and gently cup it in my hands and bring it to my heart. As you press the flame into your chest, right where that order sigil is engraved into your order armor, it almost seamlessly transfers into you. And with it, a blazing inferno courses through your very core, igniting your muscles and veins. Were the faintest trace of evil to reside within you, this divine flame would consume you utterly, reducing you to mere ash. Yet you fear not, for your soul radiates a brilliance as pure as the luminous sheen of the sacred order armor that adorns you. Anderson, born of a mother unknown who callously abandoned you upon the hallowed steps of the order house, you were raised from infancy meticulously sculpted to become a revered paladin of Phalor. Your days were spent immersed in arduous training from relentless sword forms to grueling drills, unending from the break of dawn until the fall of dusk. Imperfections were ruthlessly eradicated, and the insidious temptations that ensnare lesser mortals and lead them astray from the path of righteousness were purged from the depths of your very soul. To some, this may appear harsh, but to you, it was the crucible that forged your destiny. How could you not reminisce fondly upon the upbringing that molded you into the champion paragon you are today? Beneath your green-skinned visage, infused with the lineage of orcs, a white-hot radiance begins to emanate, an incandescent glow that surges through your veins. No pain assails you, for there exists no reason to fear the purging light of the Dawnfather. Nay, it is only those who have forsaken goodness and cast their lot in with the shadowed realms of wickedness that must tremble before the might of this divine light. When bards weave their tales of paladins, their words often embellish with flowery grandeur, yet there is no romance in the deeds you undertake. You traverse the foulest domains where evil has transformed the land into wretched infernos where dark layers fester with abominations so twisted and heinous that their horrors dare not be uttered. It is there amidst those accursed depths that you march with unwavering resolve. Your mission is to seek out the most terrifying, the most malevolent of heathens and abominations, and to unleash upon them an all-consuming flame of divine judgment. The tales of your valiant exploits shall never grace the lips of the bards, but such trivialities matter not to you. For the chosen path has never been about vainglory. It is a solemn duty to safeguard the lives and well-being of the innocent, to ensure that those who walk in the pure light may slumber serenely at night, knowing that you stand resolute against the surging tide of unbridled evil. With a resplendent burst of celestial radiance, colossal angelic wings emerge from your broad back, gleaming with the brilliance of your divine sunlight. The power that surges within you is beyond words. Unlike the previous time you tried to tap into a similar surge of power, the Divine Sun Flame takes no toll on your body. This is a gift, a blessing to give you the strength needed to save these lost souls that cry out for salvation. The light has been taken from them, and with it, their last ounces of hope at a new life. You will show these people, and you will show the world, that even in the darkest of nights, light can still shine. <laughs> A blinding column of light, of radiant sunlight, erupts from the very depths of your being, piercing the sky above. That black veil that has shrouded the land for months recoils, sundered by an immense rupture that bores a massive hole through it. As this radiant pillar envelops you and your comrades, wounds sustained miraculously begin to mend. And as this radiant column extends, Engulfing the town's buildings, streets, and the populace, the air reverberates with the guttural cries of anguish. Those who dwell within the shadows, or who live in death, rise in agonizing torment, obliterated by the consuming might of this divine radiance. The encroaching horde, once poised for conquest, now ignites and crumbles into a bleak torrent of ashen remains. For you have unleashed the unfathomable power granted by this holy flame. Your newly acquired blade, sings out to you an ecstatic welcome. Firmly grasped within your hand, it feels as though this weapon has forever been a part of you, now finally returned to its rightful place. With your blood oath now sealed, you survey the dwindling ranks of the undead that still surround you. This, Anderson, is the path you tread, a world of black and white. While others may immerse themselves in the quest for power, politics, 
wealth, fame, you harbor but a singular concern, an unwavering purpose, to smite the heathens with righteous fury, to vanquish them utterly, leaving naught but smoldering ruins in your wake. Uh, Maxwell just begins to laugh manically, with triumphant joy as he holds his arms outstretched up at the golden light above you all. Anderson, who are we? We are the necessary evil. And why are we necessary? To purge the world for me to evil greater than mine. And why are we Paylor's chosen few, ordained to undertake this unholy task? Because no one else will. And? Because it's fucking fun! Amen! And with that, Finian, top of the round.